Uh, my topic is on anatomical and physiological differences between neonate, infant, and adult. Uh, actually, almost all points are uh, discussed by uh, Dr. Nagaswamy sir and uh, Dr. Nageshwar Rao. I mean, uh, sorry, Vakateshwar Rao. Uh, I'll add a few more points with that. Uh, so, the anatomic differences uh, can be broadly uh, studied under five topics. The first one is the change in body size resulting from the growth process. The second one is the delayed ossification of the bones and fusion of sacral vertebra. The third one is the development of curvature of the spine. And fourth one is the loose attachment of the fascia and fluidity of the epidural fat. And fifth one is the delayed myelination of nerve fibers. So regarding the change in body size uh, resulting from the growth process, uh, during the early stages of development, the spinal cord occupies the spinal canal entirely, but later the growth of vertebra exceeds that of the cord and the lost spinal nerves, the cord and its envelopes are contained within the spinal canal. At birth, the dura mater ends at the level of third or fourth sacral vertebra and the cord, that is the conus medullaris, uh, ends at L3 or L4 level. It is only at the end of the first year of life uh, that, uh, that the adult level is obtained. That is L1 for conus medullaris and S2 for the dural sac. The anatomical relationships and landmarks are constantly changing with the growth throughout infancy and childhood, which interferes with the regional procedures and requires a working knowledge of the developmental anatomy and the assistance of accurate techniques for the localization of the anatomic spaces and nerve trunks. Congenital malformations, genetic disorders and the consequences of fetal and neonatal asphyxia, that is a cerebral palsy, are uh, observed in the pediatric population, uh, resulting in surgical procedures that are done to facilitate uh, mobility or adaptation to normal childhood life. Regarding delayed ossification of bones and fusion of sacral vertebra, the bones of the neonates, including the vertebra, are mostly cartilaginous. Sharp needles can easily traverse them because cartilage offers little resistance to penetration and ossification nuclei can be uh, severely damaged, thus compromising further bone and joint development. Consequently, the bone contact should be avoided as, as often as possible during block procedure, especially in infants. This cartilaginous structure also allows easy penetration of radiograph and ultrasound. Uh, regarding development of the uh, uh, curvature of spine, at birth, a single spinal curvature is present and the orientation of epidural needles in the same regardless of the intervertebral space. Fluxures, however, are not fixed and they can be easily co counteracted by forced reflection almost throughout the childhood because of persistent spinal flexibility, which is a major advantage in the pediatric, pediatric period, in addition to the absence of osteophytes. Regarding loose attachment of the fascia and fluidity of the epidural fat, the fascia and the perineurovascular uh, sheets are loosely attached to the underlying structures, that is the nerves, muscles, tendons and vessels. This allows extended spread of local anesthetics, resulting in high quality nerve blockade regardless of the technique, but also occasionally undesirable spread to distant nerves or anatomic spaces. The epidural fat is very fluid in infants and young children up to 6 to 7 years of age. This fluidity combined with the loose attachment of the sheet uh, surrounding the spinal roots favors consistent leakage of local anesthetics injected within the epidural space. Therefore, comparatively large volumes of epidural local, local anesthetics are required to reach the desired level of anesthesia uh, up to 1.25 ml per kg. Regarding delayed myelination of the nerve fibers, the myelination begins during the fetal period in the cervical neuromias and extends cephalod and cordot, but the process is not finalized before the 12th year of life. Myelination is especially poor in infants. The lack of fully developed nerve fibers is the main reason why they are unable to walk. A major pharmacologic consequence of this condition is that local anesthetics can penetrate and block nerve fibers more easily. Diluted solutions of local anesthetics provide the same quality of nerve blockade as with at least two-fold more concentrated solution in the adults. Onset time is shortened, but duration of blockade is reduced because trapping of local anesthetics with my, within myelin with the subsequent progressive release in is reduced. And because local circulation and therefore vascular absorption are greater in infants. So regarding the pain perception, Somatic pain is a subjective sensory experience resulting from the intermixing of three main comp components. The first component is motivational directive, second is sensory discriminatory, third is cognitive evaluative. 
the motivational directive component is conveyed by unmyelinated c fibers slow pain or true pain as are told uh, pain leads to protective reflexes such as autonomic reactions muscle contraction and rigidity c fibers are fully functional from early fetal life onward connections between c fibers and dorsal on neurons are not mature before the second week of postnatal life however nociceptive stimulation transmitted to the dorsal on by c fibers elicit long lasting responses probably as a result of extensive depolarization of the surrounding neurons in response to the production of large amount of substance p so as the number of dorsal on receptors to substance p decreases during the first two weeks of life this exaggerated response of neonates to nociceptive uh, stimulation progressively disappears the inhibitory control pathway which are immature at birth develop concomitantly so uh, regarding the anatomy of a uh, sacral hiatus the children have a specific anatomic level of the sacrum until the age of 1 year five sacral vertebrae are easily identifiable and have the appearance of lumbar vertebra each sacral vertebra has five primitive centers of ossification which will unite by 2 to 6 years of age this is due to standing body of the child who will develop who will develop the walking and the mechanical stresses in the vertebra with growth the axis of sacrum changes the sacral hiatus becomes more difficult to identify and may even close concomitantly the epidural fat becomes more densely packed thus reducing the spread of local anesthetics these changes make oral anesthesia less suitable and more difficult to perform in children older than 8 years in epidural anesthesia the epidural space contains blood vessels and lymphatics and is filled with loose fat in infants and in children up to 6 to 8 years of age one of the major characteristics of the ch child for the central block is a line connecting the two ilia crest that is the toughest line it is smaller in young children and crosses the spinous process line at the l5 to s1 level in infants up to 1 year of age instead of at l4 to l5 as in older children and adults the mobility of the vertebra and the elasticity of the ligaments in children can change the position of spinal cord in the spinal canal the spinal cord tends to more backward and get closer to the vertebral arches in a sitting position making it more difficult to identify the epidural space in the lateral decubitus position bending moves the spinal cord forward and away from the ligamentum flavum expand and expands the epidural space this is the preferred position for epidural catheter procedure in children regarding spinal anesthesia the spinal cord and the dural sac of the infants younger than 1 year of age end at, at a lower level than in older patients also the csf volume rises according to um, varies the csf volume varies according to patient's age that is more than 10 ml per kg in neonates 4 ml per kg in infants uh, less than 15 kg and 3 ml per kg in children and uh, 1.5 to 2 ml per kg in adolescents and adults the spinal and uh, cerebral distribution of the uh, csf also varies with the age of the csf volume is located within the subarachnoid space in children versus only 25% in adults this has considerable pharmacokinetic consequences and explains why larger doses of local anesthetics are required for spinal anesthesia in infants and younger children children older than 5 years of age behave like adult after spinal anesthesia whereas younger patient remain hemodynamically stable without significant hypotension or bradycardia even in case of cardiac malformations however a decrease in the mean arterial pressure during first 10 minutes was reported in infants aged 1.5 to 5 months that is uh, the uh, the dose is 0.8 mg per kg of 0.5% dupuyacin in this dose uh, there is reduction in mean arterial pressure is noted in uh infants aged 1.5 to i mean one and a half to five months but this is time limited well tolerated and rapidly uh corrected by iv fluids regarding the upper extremity conduction blocks the most important anatomic difference between infants and adults pertains to the upper part of the lung and apical pleura that penetrates the neck above above plane formed by the clavicle and first rib that is the superior thoracic aperture subclavian vessels and the lower division of the plexus are encountered in the apical pleura thus making any peri subclavian approach at major risk for pleural penetration regarding the truncal blocks abdominal blocks uh, uh, are known are known as effective techniques to provide adequate analgesia for uh, minor abdominal surgery in the children the use of usg guidance has increased the utilization of these blocks in the uh, children 
so briefly uh, uh, it, it can be uh, uh, um, told us uh, the the factors uh, which are 16 factors and the resulting danger and implications of a ranger anesthesia the first factor is the uh, lower termination of the spinal cord the resulting the resulting danger is will be the increased risk for direct trauma to the spinal cord and the implication is avoid spine epidural approaches above l3 whenever possible the second factor is lower projection of the dural sac the resulting danger will be increased risk for inadvertent penetration of the dura mater and the implications are check for csm reflex including um, during coral approaches favor lower approaches to the epidural space the third factor is delayed myelination of the nerve fibers the resulting danger will be easy intraneural penetration of the local anesthetics and the implication is the onset time is shortened and diluted uh, local anesthetic is as effective more concentrated anesthetics in adults and the fourth factor is the cartilaginous structure of bones and vertebra uh, the resulting danger will be reduced resistance to penetration by sharp needles and the direct danger of direct trauma and the bacterial contamination of the ossification nuclei compromising further bone or joint growth the implications will be avoid use of thin and sharp needles use short and short beveled ones instead do not apply uh, excessive force or needle if resistance is felt stop trying to insert the needle further and the fifth factor is lack of fusion of sacral vertebra and the resulting danger will be the persistence of the sacral intervertebral spaces the implications are intervertebral sacral epidural approaches can be performed throughout the childhood the sixth factor is delayed development of the curvature of the spine the resulting danger will be there will be lumbar uh, cervical lordosis at 6 to 6 uh, 3 to 6 months and lumbar lordosis at 8 to 9 months and the implications are same orientation of epidural needles is appropriate whenever the spinal level before 6 months of age whatever the spinal level before 6 months of age then adopt needle orientation to spinal flexures and the seventh factor is changing axis of the coccyx and absence of growth of sacral hiatus the resulting danger will be sacral hiatus comparatively smaller with increasing age and the implication is identification of sacral hiatus becomes more difficult after 6 to 8 years increased failure rate of caudal anesthesia and the eighth factor is delayed ossification of the growth of iliac crest that is a toughier slide which joins anterior superior iliac spinous process crosses the spine at l5 or lower in infants and the implications are the line passes over l5 s1 interspace instead of l4 l5 interspace the ninth factor is increased fluidity of the epidural fat. Uh, the resulting danger will be increased diffusion of local anesthetics up to six to seven years of age. And the implications are excellent blockade after caudal anesthesia can be achieved up to six to seven years of age. The tenth factor is the loose attachment of the sheath and aponeurosis to underlying structures. The resulting mm -hmm. danger will be increased spread along nerve paths with the danger of penetrating remote anatomic spaces and blocking distant nerves. And the implications are large volume of uh, local anesthetic is required for epidural blocks because of leakage along spinal nerve roots. Smaller volume of local anesthetic is necessary to produce excellent peripheral blocks. And the 11th uh, factor is enzymatic immaturity. Uh, the resulting danger will be slower metabolism of local anesthetics, usually compensated by other enzyme pathways. And the implications of uh, increased mean body res uh, residency time and half life with accumulation are characteristic, especially after repeated injection and continuous infusions of local anesthesia. The 12th factor is increased extracellular fluids. The resulting danger will be increased distribution volume and mean body residency time of local anesthetics. The implications are a decreased Cmax occurs after single injection, but accumulation occurs with the repeat or continuous injection. The 13th factor is a low plasma protein content. That is a competition at the non-specific HSA binding sites limited capacity of the specific binding of local anesthetics by AGP resulting in increased plasma concentration of free fraction. There will be more free fraction in the plasma. The implications are uh, increased unbound free fraction of all local anesthetic occurs with greater danger of systemic toxicity. The 14th factor is the increased cardiac output and heart rate. Uh, the resulting danger will be increased regional blood flow resulting in increased systemic absorption of local anesthetics. And the implications are increased systemic absorption of local anesthesia occurs and decrease the Tmax and uh, short, short duration of blockade. The increased efficacy of epinephrine vasoconstriction reduces absorption and prolongs the duration of blockade, thus leads to toxicity. The 15th factor is sympathetic immaturity. 
um, diminished auto, uh, autonomic adaptability of the heart, smaller vascular bed in the lower extremities. And the resulting danger will be hemodynamic uh, stability during the neuroxial blocks. Uh, fluid fluid preloading and uh, use of vasoactive agents are unnecessary. That is the implication. And uh, the last factor is the uh, delayed acquisition of body scheme and the conceptualization anxiety. The danger will be inability to of the patients to locate body areas. Concept of paresthesia not understandable, difficult cooperation. And the implication will be nerve and space identification requires application of local techniques independent of the patient's cooperation. Um, Heavy sedation or a general anesthesia is required in most patients, especially when a dangerous technique is planned to avoid detrimental consequences of panic attacks at a critical phase of block procedure. So these are the anatomical differences. Uh, regarding the physiological uh, considerations in CVS, uh, CVS undergoes a dramatic physiological and maturation change during the first year of age. Actually, at birth, when the placenta is removed from the circulation, the portal blood pressure falls. This leads to ductus venosus to close and blood becomes oxygenated through lungs. Exposure of ductus arteriosus to oxygenated blood induces ductal closure. As a result of combined effect of lung expansion, exposure of blood to the O2 and loss of low resistance through placental blood flow, pulmonary vascular resistance decreases while the peripheral vascular resistance rapidly rises. The decrease in pulmonary uh, vascular resistance occurs on first day of life and continues to decrease gradually during next several years. An increase in pressure on the left side of the heart caused by the increase in peripheral vascular resistance induces the mechanical closure of the foramen oval. As a result, three connections between the right and the left side of the circulation close. True mechanical closure of the ductus uh, by fibrosis does not occur until two to three weeks of age. During this critical period, the infant can readily revert from the adult type of circulation to a fetal type called transitional circulation. So many factors that is hypoxia, hypercapnia, anesthesia induced changes in peripheral or vascular tone can affect this precarious balance and result in sudden return to the fetal circulation. The risk factors increasing the uh, likelihood of prolonged transitional circulation include the prematurity, infection, acidosis, pulmonary disease resulting in hypercapnia or hypoxemia uh, uh, when uh, there is aspiration of meconium, hypothermia and congenital heart disease. Uh, treatment will be uh, uh, BAB can be kept in warm, maintaining normal arterial uh, O2 and CO2 tension and minimizing the effect of anesthetic induced myocardial depression for those uh, newborns require anesthesia. The myocardial volume of cellular mass uh, devoted to counteractivity is significantly less developed in neonates than in adults. This difference as well as developmental changes in the contractile proteins produce a leftward displacement of the cardiac function curve and less comp compliant ventricles. As a result, cardiac output is strongly dependent on heart rate. Bradycardia is poorly tolerated because the infant cannot easily compensate for the reduced heart rate by increasing stroke volume to maintain the normal cardiac output. The most frequent encountered arrhythmia in pediatric population is hypoxia induced bradycardia that can lead to AS stole if not handled properly. And VF is extremely rare in infants in uh, children. In neonates and infants, cardiac calcium stores are reduced because of the immaturity of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Consequently, these populations have a greater dependence on exogenous calcium, that is a blood ionized calcium, and probably increase the susceptibility to myocardial depression by volatile anesthetics that have calcium channel blocking activity. Um, the changes in the respiratory system, alveolar ductal development starts at 24 weeks of gestation, while the septation of the air sacs begins around gestational week 36. Alveoli then increase in number and size until a child is appropriately 8 years old. At term, complete development of surface active proteins, that is the surfactant, helps in maintain the patency of airways. If a child is prematurely born and these proteins are insufficient, then the respiratory failure, that is the respiratory distress syndrome, may occur due to the uh, lack or absence of, uh, I mean, reduced surfactant. The respiration is less efficient in infants than adults. The airway of infants is highly compliant and poorly supported by the surrounding structures. Chest wall, is, chest wall is also highly compliant. Therefore, the ribs provide the little support for the lungs. That is the negative intrathoracic pressure is poorly maintained. The small diameter of the airways increases resistance to airflow. Thus, functional airway closure accompanies each breath. Dead space ventilation is proportionally similar to that in adults. However, O2 consumption is two to three times higher. Another important factor is the composition of the diaphragmatic and intercostal muscles. 
these muscles do not achieve the adult configuration of type 1 muscle fibers until the child is appropriately 2 years old because type 1 muscle fibers provide ability to perform uh, repeated exercise uh, any factor that increases the work of breathing contributes to yearly fatigue of the respiratory muscles of infants. This partially explains why the infant's respiratory rate and hemoglobin desaturation saturation is so rapid. And the propensity to develop fatigue and apnea with airway obstruction. So, due to this type 1 muscle fiber, uh, there will be a, a The infant's respiratory rate and hemoglobin desaturation is so rapid. The differences in airway anatomy between infants and the adults. Uh, number one is the relatively large size of the infant's tongue in relation to the oropharynx. Suggests that the infant is more likely to sustain airway obstruction and technical difficulties during induction of anesthesia and laryngoscopy. Second one is the in children, the larynx is located higher, that is more cephalic in the neck, thus making straight blades are more useful than the curved blades. The epiglottis is shaped differently, being short, stubby, omega shaped, and angled over the laryngeal in inlet. Control with the laryngoscope is therefore more difficult. The vocal cords are angled, consequently, a blindly passed tracheal tube may easily lodge in the anterior commissure rather than slide into the trachea. So, finally, the infant larynx is funnel shaped, the narrowest portion occurring at the cricoid cartilage. It is said before that the adult larynx is cylindrical and infant larynx is funnel shaped. It is now recognized that seven, approximately 70% of adults are also having the narrowest portion in the uh, same subglottic region at the level of cricket cartilage as it is in children. So, although neonates and infants are considered uh, as obligate nasal breathers, they can also utilize the oral airway to complete nasal obstruction. So, regarding the renal system, uh, the renal function is uh, diminished in neonates with even less function in preterm infants as a result of uh, lower renal perfusion pressure and immature glomeruli and tubular function. In full term infants, it gets matured by 20 weeks after birth. Complete maturation occurs approximately 2 years of age. As a result of a delayed development, newborns have reduced the ability to excrete free water and solute loads. The off life of medications excreted by means of glomerular filtration will be prolonged. Example the antibiotics. Dosing intervals should be longer in infants. Uh, regarding the hepatic system, at term, the functional maturity of the liver is incomplete. As the infant grows, the ability to metabolize medications by enzyme systems rapidly increases for two reasons. One will be the hepatic blood flow increases and hence more drug is delivered to the liver. The second one is the enzyme systems develop and induced. The cytochrome P450 system is responsible for, for the phase 1 drug metabolism of lipophilic compounds. This system reaches approximately 50% of the uh, adult levels at birth. Phase 2 reactions involve conjugation that makes the uh, drug more water soluble to facilitate renal excretion. These reactions are often impact in neonates and result in jaundice that is decreased bilirubin breakdown um, and a long drug off life that is under, under metabolites. The drug under metabolites have, will have long off life. Example off life of the morphine and benzodiazepine is several days in, in neonates. Some of these reactions do not achieve adult activity until the age of one year. The plasma levels of albumin and other proteins necessary for the binding of drugs are lower in full-term newborns, newborns than in older infants. This has clinical implications regarding the neonatal coagulopathy, example for need for vitamin K at the birth, as well as for drug binding and its pharmacodynamic effects. The lower the albumin value, the less protein binding of some drugs with the resultant greater levels of unbound drugs. Regarding GA system, at birth, uh, the gastric pH is alkalotic. By second day of life, the pH is in the normal physiological range for older children. The ability to coordinate swallowing with respiration does not fully mature until infants are 4 to 5 months of age, resulting in a higher incidence of gastroesophageal reflux. Regarding uh, hematological and coagulation system, there will be increased RBC production and fetal hemoglobin production in in vitro uh, to prevent hypoxemia. Fetal hemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen, causing a leftward shift in the oxygen dissociation curve. The HP levels are high at birth, even 160 to 240 gram per liter, but rapidly decrease during the first three months of uh, life because of the reduced renal erythropoietin production in normal ex-utero environment. 
fetal fetal hemoglobin uh, uh, will be converted into adult hemoglobin during first six months of the postnatal life. The hemostatic system of neonate and infant has many unique features compared to adults. At birth, the level of vitamin K dependent coagulation factors are low. They reach adult levels by six months of age. Fibrinogen levels are comparable between newborns and adults. However, the fibrinogen polymerization does not reach its full capacity during the first few natal postnatal months, thereby leading to prolonged thrombin time. The platelet number at birth is also comparable to adults, but platelet function is impaired. Antithrombin 3 and protein S levels reach maturity by 3 months of age, whereas the protein C and plasminogen levels reach adult levels after 6 months of life. The overall results of this hypercoagulable state are higher risk of thromb thrombotic complication in neonates and infants. Uh, in, in the central nervous system, both premature and term newborns show strong pain behavior that is more diffuse and untuned when compared to older children and adults. There is evidence that easy, yearly painful experiences, even if non-conscious, might alter the subsequent CNS function and that adequate pain relief can improve the outcome. Regarding the thermoregulation, infants are especially vulnerable to hypothermia because of the large ratio of the body surface, surface area to the weight, the thinness of the skin and the limited ability to cope with cold stress. The cold stress causes increased O2 consumption and the metabolic acidosis. The infant compensates by shivering and non-shivering. That is, uh, non-shivering is the uh, cellular thermogenesis. However, uh, the minimal ability to shiver during the first three months of life makes cellular thermogenesis the principal method of heat production. As a result of these issues, managing heat loss is vital for newborns and undergoing anesthesia and surgery. Treatment will be placing the baby on a warming mattress and warming the surgical unit uh, at 80 degree Fahrenheit or uh, can be kept in the warmer will reduce the heat loss by conduction. Keeping the infant in an incubator and covered with the blankets minimize the heat loss through convection, including the head, because more heat will be lost through the scalp. Hot air blankets are the most effective means of warming children. At the same time, especially in neonates, overheating should be avoided. The anesthetics also uh, impact thermoregulation, particularly non-shivering thermogenesis in neonates. So these are the physiological effects. Thank you, sir. Very good. I thought uh, the way you started, you have mistaken the same question given to Dr. Venkatesar Rao as your question. Because yes, sir. Yes, you sir. have prepared the uh, nervous system uh, uh, differences and uh, concentrated mainly on regional anesthesia and the uh, importance of uh, CNS and peripheral nerves in the units and units. Yes, sir. Uh, but the Whenever this question is a very often repeated question, differences in the anatomical and physiological factors of, uh, between the neonates, infants, and adults is a very uh, frequently repeated question in the theory. So you should concentrate more because if you start writing all the 16 points what you have described, you won't find time to finish the answer in 20 minutes, which is available for yes, you in the theory exam. So you have to make it a more concise and uh, Always start with the cardiovascular system, then go to the respiratory, yes, then go to the neurological, then renal, then gastrointestinal, thermoregulatory, and uh, uh, growth and other things like that. If you hematological and growth, so in that okay, way, sir. if you make it a <clears throat> subdivision, it will be much more easier. You have covered almost all. I think you have taken the entire uh, Miller into pre preparing your answer. Yes, sir. So. Uh, I'll just going to show a very short preparation, not a lengthy one like it, so that you can remember the basic things. So first few facts about neonates are what is the definition, WHO defines prematurity as a live birth before 37 weeks of gestational age. So if the baby is born beyond 37 weeks, it is con not considered as premature. So, child should be born before 37 weeks of gestational age. Gestational age is the duration of pregnancy from the first day to the last menstrual, first day of last menstrual period. So, there is a moderate to late preterm, which is 32 to 37 weeks. Very preterm is 28 to 32 weeks. And extremely preterm is less than 28 weeks. So, 
more the premature the baby is more the complications which survival as well as if they need any interventions and preterm infants can also be categorized according to the birth weight low birth weight is less than 2500 grams very low birth weight is 1500 extremely low birth weight is less than 1000 and post menstrual age or post conception age ga that is a <clears throat> gestational age plus chronological age that is why i said when you describe a new neonate you must always use 44 week of conception uh, gestational age so that is what you have to uh is correct and apnea is a pathological manifestation of anatomical and physiological immaturity so occurs in more than 80% of extremely low birth weight infants and apnea is defined as cessation of air flow for 20 seconds or uh, more or less than 20 seconds associated with bradycardia cyanosis or pallor in other words desaturation So apnea is exacerbated by many factors like surgery and anesthesia, including hypoxia, hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia, hypothermia or hyperthermia, anemia, sedative drugs, neurofemoral response to surgery, and post-operative pain. So this is one of the important uh, apnea of prematurity. Some books say it is apnea of prematurity. So asking for the birth history. in pediatric uh, case uh, history taking is very very important so if the child is a born premature baby you must always keep this apnea of prematurity in mind when they require a neonatal surgical procedure so the risk of post operative apnea is up to 60 weeks of uh, birth after birth so it can happen at any time so strict uh, post operative vigilance and monitoring is very very important so anesthesia for neonate requiring emergency laparotomy should take place in specialized unit these are all some of the points with regard to neonatal procedures and multidisciplinary team <coughs> working with pre operative optimization and good communication ensures best possible outcome surgery may uh, need so these are all points regarding surgery in uh, mm. uh, neonates which we will see in the next topic so differences between neonate infant and adult anatomy and physiology this may be the common question that we will be learning so you always start with the prefer preferable to have a tabular column like this so with regard to the airway upper airway the tongue is large in adult I and mean, in pediatric patients compared to the oral cavity size and epiglottis is floppy omega shaped adult it is form and flatter epiglottic level is very important it is at a higher level of c3 and c4 and it is at the level of c5 and c6 lower in the adult trachea is smaller and shorter whereas it is wider and longer larynx is funnel shaped and the in adult some books say it is cylindrical or <clears throat> just like a column larynx uh, the vocal cords are angled posteriorly whereas it is straight and down in adult and subglottic region is supposed to be the narrowest but nowadays they say even in adults that is the narrower part but because of the larger size of the trachea and the subglottic area you don't get into any problem and lung volume is about 250 ml at birth whereas it is 6 6000 ml in an adult so what are all the shape this uh, Funnel shape of the larynx and trachea, the narrowest point being tricuspid. The glottic tip is high and is stiff. So the, all the important considerations when attempting airway management, you have worried about the glottic stenosis or glottic uh, narrowing. If you put a very tight tube or a tube which may easily pass between the vocal cords, may not go uh, easily through the subglottic area in children. And the high basal metabolic rate. This results in higher inspiratory rates or respiratory rate and oxygen consumption. So the higher respiratory rate results in great loss of water from the lungs. So they can get dehydrated. So you have to talk something about their fluid also in the physiology. What is the composition? They have children at birth have more extracellular fluid compared to the intracellular fluid. 
which gets reversed as you grow older <coughs> your intracellular fluid becomes more compared to the extracellular fluid whereas in children ecf is more compared to icf and the thoracic cage is soft and chest wall is compliant and intercostal muscles are poorly developed or they don't have that what is called the type 1 or slow oxidative muscles or fibers these fibers are <coughs> mostly doing aerobic metabolism so they have more strength and uh, they can withstand uh, fatigue much more strongly or for a longer duration whereas because of the lack of the type 1 or of slow oxidative fibers in the infants and neonates they get fatigue much faster that is the reason why for longer surgeries <coughs> we are not supposed to leave them on spontaneous respiration for a long time especially when you intubate them and uh, leave them on spontaneous they get fatigued and they go for hypoventilation much faster so infants and young children rely on their diaphragm to create negative pressure and chest wall movement because there is no what is called the bucket handle movement like an adult the cord has to be used in the respiratory system so their <coughs> ribs are uh, not able to create the negative intrapleural pressure like an adult so that bucket handle movement is very very important for creating the negative inspiratory pressure during inspiration so that is also absent in neonates and infants and they are obligatory nasal breathers so any blockage of the nose <coughs> produces increases resistance and labored breathing and difficulty in feeding also results and they have alveoli are not fully developed in fact uh, up to what age the alveoli keep growing any idea rajkumar do we have all Sir. the alveoli at birth itself or at up to what age the alveoli go on increasing in number uh, up to the age of 8 years okay the alveoli uh, yes, or increase in number up to the age of 8 years so there are smaller and fewer alveoli there is limited in alveol uh, limited alveolar surface has got gas exchange area is much reduced and increased dead space so inference much breathe faster that is another reason for their rapid respiratory rate so to make for, for the minute ventilation so this is a pictorial description to remember what are all the <coughs> differences the pediatric the tongue you can see is much more larger compared to the adult so the oral cavity space is fully occupied epiglottis is flop here and you can see this is the uh can funnel shaped uh, airway upper airway subglottic narrowing tricuspid level with the most narrowest part and uh, you have the uh, level is almost at the higher level vertebral level compared to the adult one so <clears throat> so the narrow airway means greater risk of obstruction from any swelling like the inhalation burns or conditions as poop or bacterial uh, Uh, infections in the epiglottis and foreign bodies some toys or food they can easily obstruct the airway and nasal mucosal congestion because of uh, infections and large gum with small mouth also is another reason for that so if you try to put them in uh, mm. a sniffing position you will make it more difficult the uh, airway will get more obstructed because the tongue will fall back and completely occlude so if you want to intubate a child in a neonate or an infant it is rather better to put a roll under the neck or the vertebral and the cervical spines rather than our putting an uh, elevation at the occiput as you do it in an adult that is a very important practical point to to keep a patent upper airway you have to increase the flexion of the cervical spine by putting a roll under the Uh, neck region rather than putting any support at the occiput and external pressures inadvertently place the soft cartilage of the airway <clears throat> now coming to the neurological temperature temperature regulation is not well developed that is part of the neurological function so neonate and infants become hypothermic if like the sport they are also 
susceptible for heat loss from surface because of their large body surface area and larger heads to the body size make children more susceptible for head injuries also and motor development is incomplete increasing their risk of falls and thinner cranial bones compared to the thicker bones found in adult skulls as a result child's brain tissue is less protected hemorrhages and diffuse brain injury head trauma are more common in children than adults and the presence of fontanelles anterior fontanelle remains open until 12 to 18 months of age in the posterior fontanelle close between 2 to 3 months of age so <clears throat> any accumulation like uh, the obstruction uh, the so called uh, that okay uh, hydrocephalus will be slowly manifesting so the adaptation will be very very good for a long time because the fontanelles are still open and the suture lines can expand and there will not be any drastic increase in the intracranial pressure but uh, once the suture lines fuse then there will be a rapid increase in intracranial pressure and uh, that will be the mm. time when that is why the uh, increase in the head circumference is the main um, parameter by which we can identify Uh, hydrocephalus in children rather than by any signs of raised intracranial pressure and of course you can include all the spinal and vertebral just make a mention of it and don't go deep into that and uh, <clears throat> try to write what all these things with regard to its uh, implications in spinal and other things and the brain is about 12% of the normal body weight of the child even though it is only over 200 to 300 grams it occupies almost 12% whereas in the adult it is only about 2% and the infant uh, csf volume is 50 ml whereas in adult it's about 150 peripheral nerves are not myelinated whereas it is fully myelinated in adult and primitive reflexes are retained up to the age of 6 months and uh, Uh, primitive reflexes appear only if there is a neurological disease in the adult and uh, the weight of the brain as i said is about 300 to 500 grams whereas it is about 1300 to 1400 grams on 1.5 kilos in adult reflex activities are uh, present in infancy they disappear and voluntary control develops vision eyes are not anatomically <clears throat> mature not able to function properly so the focusing will not be there for uh, quite some time whereas adults they develop full vision and hearing neonates can hear loud noise at birth but adults can listen to so softer and soothing sound also so uh, then coming to the cardiovascular system <clears throat> the large body surface area the result is Uh, greater fluid losses through evaporation children require greater fluid requirements to maintain an adequate circulating volume a large heart in relation to body size despite this the heart has a decreased contractile efficiency this is a very important there is a large mass but the contractibility is quite uh, poor infants and children have difficulty in manipulating their cardiac stroke volume so they are mainly rate dependent cardiac output maintainers they increase their heart rate to increase the cardiac output small volumes of blood will constitute a significant blood loss in children so even for example 100 ml hemorrhage experienced by a 5 kg child represents the loss of approximately 10% of the total blood volume because it is the blood volume is quite small cardiac output the oxygen delivery in children are higher per kg than in adults because of increased oxygen consumption so this uh, oxygen consumption is also high anything that causes an increase in consumption or decrease in delivery can result in decompensation and the veins are very small and the, there is an increased subcutaneous tissue so vascular access in young children especially premature babies is very very Uh, challenging it can be very difficult at times and there is increased workload of the cardiovascular system due to higher metabolic rate so all these factors make it much more problematic and as you said the calcium stores are very low so they depend on calcium isogenous calcium 
So if, uh, if by any chance they go into hypocalcemia or if any volatile anesthetic is uh, going to block the calcium channels, they all can produce severe cardiovascular depression. And uh, circulation changes from birth, uh, from fetal to adult type, but neonates up to 10 days of their neonatal period, they are prone to reverse to fetal circulation with disastrous effects that they may go into severe hypoxemia in spite of administering 100% oxygen. So when you are delivering 100% oxygen with the baby's saturation is still low, you have to suspect what is called the reversal or uh, reversal to fetal circulation, which is also called as flip-flop or yo-yo circulation. Okay, This is another name for what is called reversal to the fetal circulation. The other name is flip-flop or yo-yo circulation. And this is uh, precipitated by hypoxemia, hypercarbia, acidosis, all these things <clears throat> can cause an increase in the pulmonary pressure. So normally after birth, all of you would have learned that they, there is a drastic fall in the pulmonary pressures and increase in systemic vascular resistance. But uh, when these conditions like hypoxemia, hypercarbia, acidosis, all these things happen in the neonatal period, then the pulmonary pressures again rise and they open the foramen oval which is closed and also re-establish the ductus arteriosus communication which will result in deoxygenated blood mixing with the oxygenated blood. So that is the reason for the severe hypoxemia. So hunting occurs and that is the a very grave situation it should not be allowed to happen in neonatal period mm. coming to then gastrointestinal there is an increased glucose requirement so glycogen storage are poor this point has to be very very important you have to remember and neonates and infants and children can all rapidly develop hypoglycemia and muscle fatigue so reliance on other fluids and nutrition is also there. This can be particularly difficult for caregivers to meet the increased nutritional or fluid requirement, especially if they are sick or critically ill. And higher metabolic rate, this results in increased waste production and increased fluid and nutritional requirement. Cylindrical shape of abdomen, <clears throat> this results in poor protection for vital organs such as the liver and spleen. Proportionately longer intestinal length, resulting in later fluid losses. Immature lower esophageal sphincter tone until one month that may persist up to 12 months. This results in regurgitation and positive uh, possibility of uh, uh, vomiting and uh, loss of feeding. So, Children quite relaxed infants, resulting in frequent regurgitation and vomiting. Whereas the adult, the cardiac sphincter is a good tone. GA functioning is immature and involuntary. Whereas it is, uh, we have a more volitional control. So that is why children can't hold their uh, motion they just fast as they feel. Whereas we are able to hold it because of the voluntary control. And uh, older children, there is a milk teeth or temporary teeth and an adult they develop permanent teeth tool of neonate is loose liver size is four percent of body weight whereas tool in adult is hard and liver size is 12 to 13 times at birth weight so uh, liver go, goes on increasing and uh, all the enzyme faction, uh, functions improve another important difference is the renal difference the large body water, <coughs> total body water, that is used here, infants and children have greater fluid requirement and they are more susceptible for fluid loss. The both GFR and tubular functions are very poor. <coughs> this can result in not able to conserve sodium. So there is a lot of sodium wasting. So because sodium cannot be reabsorbed from the PCT and decreased ability to concentrate urine resulting in loss of water and the age related changes in pharmacokinetics and dynamics resulting in slower excretion of some drugs and the expected urine output is, uh, is 1 to 2 ml per kg per hour whereas an adult it should be 0.5 to 1 ml per kg so because of the more excretion of water you would expect more water to go out so <coughs> comparatively the child should have a little more uh, urine volume. 
coming to the musculoskeletal system infants lack muscle tone power and coordination they rely on support and supervision of others to keep themselves stable and safe bones are soft until puberty therefore bones will break and bend more easily bones are more flexible serious internal injuries can be present without fractures and infants still growing they have growth plates located between the middle and the end of the long bones so fractures may occur it may affect the growth plate and specialized attention and uh, they are more active so the fractures can be easily corrected by splints and uh, uh, <clears throat> casts rather than doing any surgery and babies are born with more bones as they grow some bones fuse together and reduce in number of course it will not be quiz questions what how many bones are there in uh, birth and how much you have as an adult uh, and what are all the parameters you have to know respirate rate is about 21 to 45 at uh, one year of age at uh, 1 to 4 it can be 16 to 35 5 to 11 it is 16 to 30 and 12 years it is 16 to 25 heart rate 100 to 160 90 to 130 and reaches adult 60 to 120 blood pressure also is very low systolic is very low in the uh, younger group and it comes to normal only at the up to 12 years of age so some these are some of the just a few points with which you can write your answer in a more uh, <clears throat> short form to make up for the time and uh, First, he mentioned about symptomatological changes. Those also can be uh, included in the answer. And uh, so, except for the first part of Rajkumar's presentation, which was very, very elaborate to uh, match almost the first question that we discussed, that can be trimmed and pruned, and other things can be included to complete the answer. What you need to write for this, okay? <coughs> thank you sir thank you so much it was covering the enormous subject so comprehensively it will be a real boon for all of our students any questions or doubts from students uh, dr rajkumar uh, you want to say something uh, sir yeah No, your answer was very well prepared, Raj Kumar. Only thing you have to include about the bottle bucket handle type of rib movement. What is the importance of this uh, type one fiber? Why the okay, respiratory sir. rate is high? That sort of uh, subtle points you have to improve. And uh, uh, of course, with regard to the subglottic area, you can also add about the type of tube that you want to use when you want to give uh, endotracheal tube DA. So majority okay, of the times we prefer to use the same tube up to the age of six years, but uh, the present current concept is we can go for uh, cuffed endotracheal tubes, and the earlier type of cuffed endotracheal tube uh, with a uh, Murphy size that is that is again going to sit on the subglottic area. So now they have developed what is called micro cuff tubes, which are placed more distally. Uh, the uh, Uh, pictures are available in Miller comparing both the older type of uh, cuffed endotracheal tubes for pediatric use as well as the micro uh, tubes uh, with uh, the cuff placed distally, which will go beyond the tricord area, so that there won't be any compression and uh, fear of uh, uh, extubation, laryngeal edema, and uh, obstruction. So. that is another recent point which is improved so people now prefer to use the so called micro cuff tubes for major surgeries requiring anesthesia for 2 hours 3 hours in infants so that there is uh, lesser use of you know, the diary volume that is to deliver to the patient that is the uh, total minute ventilation can be equal to the patient ventilation or even less than that low flow anesthesia is also possible so that you can also reduce the theater pollution because uh, if you use a plain tube there is bound to be a lot of leak and uh, all the gases are going to be delivered into the atmosphere so theater pollution also can be reduced 
So these are the advantages claimed with the uh, micro cuff tubes, which are now available for pediatric use also. So even in neonates now they are using the so-called micro cuff tubes uh, for <coughs> ET tube general anesthesia. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think there are no more questions or doubts from students.